Hello, everyone, and welcome to our webinar from A to Z, Selecting and Optimizing Your MDM Solution. Two housekeeping points before we get started. The session is being recorded, and you will receive a link over the next few days by email. Secondly, please submit your questions throughout the presentation in the Q&A section, and we will be addressing these questions towards the end of the webinar. Regarding selecting and optimizing MDM solutions, we couldn't ask for a better team of speakers to explore this topic with you. Tim Tassone is the Senior Principal Solution Architect at Barcodes Group US, serving in this role in the industry for over 15 years. During this time, Tim has worked with small, medium, and large enterprise customers frequently working in vertical segments such as retail, logistics, and warehousing, healthcare, and manufacturing. On a daily basis, he designs and troubleshoots with customers the system architecture for seamless integrations of hardware and software solutions, leveraging new technologies in the mobility space, including helping select the right option from an offering of dozens of MDM solutions. Kicking off the presentation today will be Marco Nielsen, Vice President of Endpoint Solutions for Barcodes Group. Marco has over 25 years of cross-functional experience in systems architecture, operating systems, hardware, and communications. Marco brings extensive experience, leadership, and expertise in the development and execution of enterprise mobility strategies. Marco leads various strategic workshops across mobility subjects, oversees the deployment of mobile devices for enterprise clients, and provides relationship management with clients, ensuring the ongoing recognition of value on their mobility investments. Thanks for joining us today, Tim and Marco. Marco, please take it away. Thank you, Edwin. So uh, welcome everyone again to this webinar. Thank you again for taking the time to join us today. Uh, I'll jump right into this and uh, just talk about some of the objectives uh, in today's session. Um, so really the first point is really to give a quick understanding of some of the acronyms in, in, the, in the history around uh, MDM and uh, mobile device management. Uh, and then really talking about the importance of mobile device management and, and uh, how does that impact you and your company. Uh, and then we'll go through some selection items to be aware of, you know, how, no matter what size uh, your company and, and what, what aspects you, do you have today. Uh, and then we'll share some, some, some ideas to maximize the value of your implementation. Uh, we'll, we'll share some information and some ideas around that. And then we'll have some uh, time at the end for Q&A. Um, so please type in your, your questions and we'll get to those at the very end. So over the last 15 years, uh, you know, technology around mobile devices have definitely continued to evolve uh, with operating systems and solutions to manage those devices. Um, so one of the main, uh, main acronyms being used today, uh, and the one that we're, we're used for the rest of this session is uh, MDM. Uh, and this is really mobile device management. This is really device centric when it first came out. Uh, so this is really around configuring the devices, uh, managing them, all policies towards the devices themselves. Uh, and we'll use this acronym for the rest of this session today. Uh, another one I wanna mention that's been used in the past uh, is MAM, so it's Mobile Application Management. And this is really the application-centric uh, approach to management. So this is the control of the applications, uh, the settings of that application to the device, and not so much the device side. And both of these technologies uh, have also involved into managed mobility services, MMS. Uh, so this is really around providers that support the various solutions and services around mobile devices. And we'll, we'll get into some more information around that in the coming slides here. Um, and then this has really evolved into uh, EMM, so enterprise mobility management. Uh, and this was kind of the next, um, next phase of this, taking everything from MDM and MAM <clears throat> excuse me, and content management and security management and really bowling into, into one solution. That happened a few years ago for many of the, many of the solution sets out there. 
the current, the current uh, phase of this has really turned into Unified Endpoint Management, UEM. Um, this is really the current acronym that many solutions are, are now pushing uh, in their marketing and sometimes in the product name as well. And this is really to encompass all the different devices that a company may have from IoT to PCs, laptops, and of course, mobile devices, which everybody has. Um, you know, so, so due to the changes in operating systems, uh, consolidation in, into one solution has really gotten easier. Uh, and this is, this is across all the different manufacturers. Uh, and it's really now easy, pretty easy to lower your cost of ownership and, and really choosing, a, uh, choosing different operating systems into one, one product set. Uh, we'll, we'll talk more about this in the coming slides that, that uh, Tim will go through. And then, then on the right side, um, we really wanted to highlight some of the technology changes that have also been going on and some terms around those, uh, really around how the devices are used within companies. Uh, and I think, I think everybody currently knows uh, BYOD. This is really bring your own device. Uh, this has been around for a few years now as well. Um, and this is really around companies allowing their employees to have corporate email and some data on their personal devices. Uh, they would still be managed in a certain sense, but it's very, uh, very low footprint um, and it still brings some security around that. Uh, another, another acronym that's been used is COPE, that's Corporate Owned Personal Enabled. Um, and some use cases around this is, uh, for example, airlines, uh, flight attendants, or uh, companies might hand out um, company owned devices to their employees but they're not completely locked down. They can still use some of that, uh, install their own applications, can modify things on it. Um, so it's another hybrid solution around that. And then probably the most used um, is, is COSU, that's corporate own single use or just single use. Um, and that's really around dedicated company devices. So these, these, this is really encompassing everything else that a mobile device is used for in a company. Um, this can be rugged devices, consumer-based devices, tablets, mobile devices, but these are usually locked down into some fashion where you can only use a few applications, there's a kiosk, uh, you know, things are kind of locked down, locked down pretty tightly. Um, so that, that's kind of the, the overview on acronyms that we just wanted to go through, and uh, we'll get into more, more details around these as we move forward. So going a little bit deeper in the solution set, um, just to get everybody up to speed and make sure that we're talking about the same things, you know, so on, on the left side there, you know, most modern MDM solutions really have some of these aspects uh, on, on the left here. Um, so things like mobile uh, remote device management. So this is really, really the feature set that, that allows you to enroll the device and the operating system, you know, allows you to remotely configure things remotely. There's also supportability aspects of that. Um, so those are very powerful things to have. On the security management side, um, so these, these remote policies that you push out to the devices are often grouped together in something called profiles. Uh, and the profiles could dedicate uh, restrictions in the devices, what you can or cannot do, depending on the use cases we just talked about in the previous slide. Um, and in the, some in some cases, the operating system also allows you to remotely wipe the device. So this is really useful if you if you've lost the device or it's stolen or you really don't know where it is anymore. You can then push out this kind of wipe command uh, remotely, and it will wipe everything on the device, and you, your data can be protected in that sense. Uh, another another grouping of, of feature sets is really around application management. Um, so this is really powerful stuff too, where you can deploy, you know, your own custom apps. Uh, a lot of companies have their own custom apps they're developing. Um, that's pretty prevalent and you can push those out or you can also have public applications from the Google Play Store, or the Apple App Store. Um, and you can also manage the licenses around that. So uh, some of the new features in recent years, you might have to buy licenses for those from those app stores. Uh, and this could all be managed centrally and easily in these uh, MDM solutions. So something to be aware of. Um, and then the, another aspect around applications is, is also a, a wave in the last few years where you can also um, remotely configure applications. Um, so in the old days, you have to go into the application and change settings. Now you can send out a file and the application is really configured remotely to what you want your end users to have. 
Um, and this is, for example, you know, like an allow list for your uh, browser on the device. So you can actually manage, you know, which websites the browser can access on the mobile device as an example. Uh, last but not least, you know, asset tracking and asset information. Um, so now, you know, with, with devices that are connected to a carrier, you have uh, GPS data that you could send back to the MDM solution. Um, and this is very really useful for, you know, you can have geofencing, you could have features where you can see where the device is at on a map. Um, and that can be useful for some, for some use cases. Uh, device inventory. So a lot of information is, is coming back uh, from the devices into the MDM solutions. And I see a lot of customers using that information as, as reporting, you know, what devices they have, what versions they're running, um, what kind of asset information uh, you can gather. And so that's all, it's all very, very powerful stuff. On the right side of the, uh, the screen, uh, we listed some, some managed mobility services aspects of these. So kind of tying back to those features. Um, so, you know, with the right centralized configuration, you know, you could really do remote deployment really well. You can make it easy. Uh, you can turn on the device, follow some simple steps. And it's all provisioned, it's included. Um, and then around uh, help desk services, like I mentioned, a remote device management, um, you know, there is definitely the possibility, depending on the operating system uh, and the solution you've selected, you know, you can actually take remote control. Uh, and help the end user through different uh, different issues going on and making sure that they they have a device that's up and running and also um, for the applications they need. Uh, around repair and spare pool services, this is really important. So when you do have to reduce downtime, <clears throat> you really want to make sure the devices are operational and uh, you know these devices are usually revenue generating devices. So you definitely want to have them up and running at all times. And when you do have repair and spare pool services, you want to make sure that they're re-enrolled into the MDM solution. So they're in the same, in the same uh, solution and the same management scheme as before. Uh, and then last but not least, to, to manage and, as, and assist with MDM solutions, um, a lot of providers have a, a wide selection of different services to consult, to set up, install, um, and also take care of the day-to-day -day management and really making sure that you have uh, everything that you need to manage your mobile device management system correctly. Altogether, um, you know, you hear about the manage of these, of, of these services and solutions and something like MDM as a service uh, and other acronyms around that as well. But we'll, we'll get into more of these in, in future slides here in the session. So before we, we jump into details on how to choose an MDM solution, um, let's, let's really talk about you know, why we need to uh, talk about that and jump into our first poll. Thank you. Thank you, Edwin. Um, so the, these questions are really trying to figure out you know, what devices do you have in your business? What's important to you? And uh, as you can see, there's, there's a ton of, of stats and, and information going on in the marketplace you know, as as numbers continue to grow, input technologies are growing really fast and that's across the board. So you see smart, smart devices, sensors, you know, basically anything that can run an operating system, you can manage with these solutions. Um, so this, if this is something that your company is getting uh, more and more into or want to get more involved into, this could really you know, sway which, which mobile device management solution you want to pick. Um, so that's why it's really important to, to look at what devices you have. Um, so I, I think we'll close the poll here and see. So it, it's uh, we're already seeing a great number, a wide number of answers here, all depending on where you stand with support. There's a big number with uh, rugged devices, large numbers of consumers. And it's good to see some IoT devices. So some of you are, are definitely looking at IoT devices. Uh, and, and of course, a large number looking at desktops and all the traditional uh, uh, aspects out there and printers. So uh, we can also highlight some printer aspects as well later on with Tim. Great. So continuing on to kind of uh, outline the scope and the need for it, um, we'd like to have another quick poll and kind of where, where do you stand today? Uh, you know, and so these questions are really around, do, do you already have something? Um, and some of these aspects could also be that uh, you have one, but maybe, maybe not uh, using it to its full potential. Uh, we can get into some of that as well in the next slides. 
Um, but security is definitely something that we've seen a lot of companies being a big topic of. Uh, mobile devices are now running these operating systems and hardware that, you know, a few years ago, it was only found at desktops. I mean, things are crazy. So you can run a lot of stuff on these mobile devices you have in your pocket today. Uh, and therefore the risks of, of security increases. And we also know that IT is, you know, being pushed to, you know, make more and more changes faster, roll out of new connected devices, you know, handle updates and patches. And you definitely need some tools around that uh, to make sure you have the right applications and all other, on all their mobile devices. We also have been seeing device form factors um, so people having mobile devices, my other have tablets, uh, and that's increasing as well. Um, so all these things really, really bring together more security and compliance needs. Uh, and that, this is across the, the field, uh, depending on smartphones or if you're using uh, BYD, it's, it's all those different things. Um, so let's close the poll. So yeah, so the, we're seeing that there is definitely a good chunk of people out there having a uh, current MDM that they're using. Uh, and there's also big, uh, you know, some I'm not surprised to see some no's out there too. Um, so, the, so the key takeaway for the no's and yeses out there is, is really to see, uh, I hope we can give some pointers in the session um, and really to, to give you some more answers to better use it or uh, pick, pick a solution that you might not ha already have. So with that, uh, I'd like to hand things over to Tim and he, he will talk through uh, some of the aspects that I kind of outlined. Well, great. Th thanks for that, Marco. Um, I think this is actually a great opportunity to, to talk through maybe some of the, the functional benefits and, and how that equates to some of the business benefits of, of deploying an MDM. Generally speaking, uh, let's face it, an MDM is really just a tool set that enables remote management. Um, there's implications here. It means through a single pane of glass, we can really prepare hardware and better enable users really regardless of their location or their proximity to any technical resources. Um, having gone through the last 14, 15 months, I'm, I'm sure we all understand that. I'm sure many of us have worked remote in some way, shape, or form, um, and we understand the need to have that, that remote flexibility. Next, we've got this ability here uh, to, to mitigate risk, mitigate risk and enforce security policy. Now, this can be something as simple as, for example, creating a kiosk menu. You might do this to streamline access into select applications. Let's imagine you've got a a user that runs a dedicated application and nothing more. We wanna make sure they've got simple access to that application, but we also wanna prevent that user from getting out and maybe accessing some of the other bells and whistles in this robust platform. So something as simple as creating a kiosk menu, we'll call that a security value. Uh, we could take it even further though. We could do something as complex as, for example, creating a geofence. So that might be, for example, drawing a location on the map that says devices within this location receive access to say corporate resources. If you're outside this location, that access is restricted. And of course, we can't talk about security without talking about firmware management. Um, I ever increasing need here to maintain our firmware ver versions, but uh, many of the MDM tools on the market today are, are uh, really getting a lot better at, at enabling users to be able to control that. Uh, so for example, on the iOS side, as we start to embrace uh, iOS and uh, supervised management of those types of devices, we have the ability, for example, to force a device to go through its update or force a device to look for an update. We also have the ability to restrict that or delay that update up to a certain amount of time. If we were talking about rugged hardware, for example, that's a different story. There's not necessarily a good firmware over the air mechanism for every manufacturer out there. So in a lot of cases, we need a tool to be able to deploy updates, deploy firmware updates, deploy patches to those devices that might be out in the field. And we're really seeing a lot of progress uh, from, from many MDMs out there uh, who continue to work closely with OEMs to make that happen. Next, we have this ability really to establish a uniform configuration for really all device use cases or device types. And what this means is we're really establishing a support standard a uh, support standard, again, for application use, maybe a support standard for communications requirements within your enterprise. And again, touching on the firmware management option, um, we can't ignore that, okay? We, we wanna have a uniform firmware. We wanna ensure that uh, all devices are, are up to snuff with our configuration there. So in great part, this is of huge value. Um, we can maintain this unique configuration for really any given use case. And a lot of value in that. 
Uh, from a troubleshooting and a maintenance perspective, let's face it, that, that makes everyone's life easier. Um, as someone who <laughs> has been an SE, who's, who's worked with many end users to troubleshoot various issues, um, I, I can't tell you how many times we encounter issues uh, that have resulted from inconsistent configuration. So uniform configuration or the ability to set that per use case is invaluable. And, and next, we can actually even simplify that hot hardware onboarding process, which honestly, in some cases, hardware onboarding follows the same process as employee onboarding. Uh, in some cases, an employee starts, we go through the process with them to onboard their hardware, and once they have their hardware, they can start going through their, their HR processes, start the learning process, understanding the new business, for example. So big, big value in these particular tools, and how does this translate then to business benefits? Well, we can maximize uptime, so we're extending configuration and support resources out to the edge. I'd mentioned that no longer do we need to have close proximity, say, to a technical resource. We've got this ability to manage this through a single pane of glass regardless of where the device location is. We're enabling users to work smarter. So we are eliminating the, the one-off configuration of devices. Again, I had mentioned policy management. We are making decisions at the group level. We are applying policies at the group level. We're ensuring everybody is receiving the configuration they need for their use case. This does translate then also to a scaled back support group. So if we have the ability to manage these devices through a single pane of glass, maybe we don't need as many technical resources to go work individually with end users. And next, this obviously also translates to an enhanced end user experience. Honestly, issuing a managed consumer device to end users or allowing users to bring their own device into your environment, um, that, that brings a level of familiarity and comfort to end users. Um, anything you can do to make them comfortable and encourage them to adopt and use the resources you're providing, I think is a good thing. And again, as an SE, can't deny that this makes administrators happy. Okay, um, To be able to, again, change the configuration remotely through one pane of glass versus me spending the next 48 hours tracking down individual devices, certainly that makes a lot of people happy. Uh, next slide, please. So we've got some, some great, great fact here, great research. So uh, a third party research firm, VEC, has actually found that uh, uh, deployment of an MDM can save up to $230 per device. So let's take a deeper dive. Where, where do these savings come from? And it's, it's really not too hard to dig it out. So from a remote service or a support standpoint, so faster service, given all devices are managed remotely, We've got this ability to simplify the deployment process, again, remotely. We've got uh, uh, what translates to uh, simplified logistics, right? If we are onboarding a device, um, we could do this with a device in hand. We could do this remotely. So no longer do we have to say ship a device to New York to be provisioned, then ship it back to California where the end user is located. We could actually leverage some of the existing tools out there to ease that onboarding process. So this again, translates to a decrease in the support burden or less labor cost. I touched on the consistent configuration. And again, that, there's value in that, right? So we had mentioned the one-off configuration can create a lot of issues for us out there. Um, and again, I, I assure you, I've seen more issues stemming from inconsistencies in configuration than anything else. Easy savings there. Let's think about the updating aspect, whether this is a firmware update or, or even a, a, an application update. Again, if we don't have a tool, a remote management tool, we are possibly requiring end users to ship their hardware to us. If they're shipping their hardware, that means they don't have a device to work with. That is loss in productivity. So lots of areas where we can dig some, some savings um, just in our ability to manage the devices remotely. Now, on top of all this, obviously an MDM also offers some other benefits. We've got the ability to see the assets as they're out in the field, and we can get a better understanding of what's actually being utilized. So maybe in our deployment, maybe we roll out devices and we see, boy, we're only using a percentage of the hardware that we've intended for use. Why is that? Okay. So it can really allow you to right size your deployment in that sense. And then lastly, again, we, we can't ignore data protection. <laughs> That's again, invaluable. So these MDM utilities, the management frameworks that Google has developed, the management framework that iOS has developed, 
are really allowing us to enforce uh, security policies or just for example, things like device encryption to protect the data on the device or possibly even device hardening measures as, as Marco alluded to there. So if a device is lost, reported as lost, maybe we could take some steps to say, default that device, remove any corporate or enterprise content from that device, uh, or even take it a step further, harden that device, track it, try to see where that device went. Yeah. So as you can see, it's pretty easy to find the savings in there. We could, we could pick at this for, for much longer and find, I'm guessing more than $230 per device, but I think you get the idea. Next slide, please. Cool. Well, so as, as things have evolved here, um, obviously platforms have evolved uh, greatly over the last few years. And with that, we've seen the mobile device management options just multiply. So today we've got a sea of options available uh, that, that help with that varying scope of support for those ever evolving platforms. So just some things to consider as we're going through that selection process. Um, one, as you evaluate those options, obviously today's needs are top priority, but that said, deployments generally don't shrink. We can't ignore tomorrow. We, we have to keep that in mind. So just a simple example here. If you're adopting a BYOD deployment, if you're going through the process of enabling users to bring their own, for example, Android devices into your environment, why is it stopping at Android? We need to consider iOS management as well. So most UEMs out there are going to offer a multi-platform support option. And quite frankly, from a market share perspective, you can't deny that Apple's got a huge presence out there. So we need to start to consider these things. You don't necessarily want to lock yourself into a, an MDM tool only capable of managing a specific platform. And we want to keep those options open. Let's consider some of the application considerations here. So keep that application infrastructure and the roadmap in mind as you're actually going through the selection process of these EMM utilities. So for example, well, cloud services are being widely adopted. We do see some use cases where select apps are still hosted internally. Now this might create a, another management need. Maybe now you need to extend VPN capabilities to users who are working outside the four walls so that they can access this internally hosted application. Really with most any platform, an MDM utility is going to allow us to extend or push out the VPN configuration to those select devices. And in some cases, we can even bind a VPN policy to a specific app, as if to say specific apps require VPN connectivity, others do not. And lastly here, I just wanna leave you with this analogy and kind of the selection process. And I, I like it, I don't know if how everybody else feels about it, but think of the, the, the process of, of qualifying an MDM almost like building a firewall. You start with your most specific needs and build out to your least specific. Generally speaking, if you can address that most specific need, um, take care of the biggest hurdle first, or it's gonna make everything else much easier. So keep that in mind. We wanna start with our most specific needs, work your way out from there. Next slide, please. Great, so let's, let's understand what, what the needs are today here. So there's a lot of variables that might come into play in the selection process. And first off, let's, let's just think about the platforms. What platforms are you actively using today? Are you supporting any legacy platforms like the old Windows Mobile Windows CE platform? We know it's no longer supported, but it's, it's everywhere, right? Most all EMMs obviously offer support for the modern platforms, iOS and Android, but many still offer support for those legacy platforms. And honestly, an MDM tool, quite frankly, helps extend the life of some of those legacy platforms. Now, as Marco had mentioned, we, we also have options for management of IoT devices, of Linux devices out there. Uh, increasingly, we're seeing the number of, of endpoints skyrocket in great part because of IoT. So we have the ability to manage these Linux devices. We also have the ability to manage full-blown desktop devices, laptops, PCs, um, or even more a simplified desktop platform like the Chrome OS. And all of this, again, implies that we can have one single pane of glass manage all these different use cases. It's entirely possible. And, and printers, too, Tim. And printers, yeah, absolutely. Printers, too. Now, <laughs> can't forget about the printers. Um, in fact, you're going to see tools uh, 
MDM tools that accommodate printers, and you'll see a lot of standalone tools out there that still accommodate printers. Um, printers are unique. Uh, I'd say that, generally speaking, a user might hold on to a printer considerably longer than they hold on to a cell phone. Um, except for my dad. My dad holds on to his cell phones for far too long. Uh, <laughs> So let's, let's consider who owns the hardware. That's, that's another aspect of this. Are you actively issuing devices to employees or are you allowing users to bring devices into your environment? Uh, Apple and Google have really set some fantastic standards out there to allow this type of enterprise flexibility. So we now have support for BYOD where we can allow users to bring their own device into our environment and we can actually deploy corporate resources down to their device in a profile. On top of that, we can put some restrictions in place that might, for example, prevent the user from taking corporate data and bringing it over to their personal data. Now, we could go the other way as well in a lot of cases, and we're seeing this with iOS, with Android. We might have a corporate owned or a corporate issued device. And Marco gave the example of, a, of an airline employee who may have a, a corporate owned single use device. Very common today. Uh, these types of corporate owned devices and the framework that's been put in place by Google and Apple we have the ability to get very granular uh, management capabilities on those devices while still allowing the users to even have some personal space on there. So again, there's a lot of flexibility, whether this is a corporate owned and issued device or this is even a personal device that's being brought into the enterprise. So next, let's consider how your enterprise is distributed. Do you have multiple sites across the country? Maybe you've got multiple sites across the globe. Uh, we definitely know we've got a swath of employees working remotely. Again, we've gone through the last 14, 15 months here. A lot of users still working remotely today. So organization is critical, right? We want to make sure that your MDM tool is capable of handling uh, maybe users that are simply working out of the office, maybe remote offices, corporate offices, maybe, maybe manufacturing facilities that are not necessarily uh, even in the same location as that particular office. Organization is going to be critical. And most MDMs will at least offer a basic level of organization to organize and say, just deploy uh, policies, say, at the group level. Ideally, we really want to identify a solution that uh, allows us to logically group those devices by use case. So keep that in mind. Um, again, it, it depends in great part on the size of your organization, but think about the distribution of your organization. So let's talk real quick about security standards and maybe some security practices that you might have within your organization. Again, both Google and Apple have developed a, a management framework that might help you meet those compliance goals. So again, I brought this example up earlier, but think of the idea of data protection. One step towards ensuring data protection is ensuring that the hardware that might host some of this data is actually encrypted. So an MDM leveraging either the, the Google EMM API, for example, has that ability to force users to set a pin policy on their devices, therefore encrypting the device, therefore encrypting the data that may reside there. To take this even further, as I mentioned earlier, um, if this was a scenario where it's a corporate issued device where the user has a personal space on the device, we could prevent that user from say, taking corporate data and moving it over to their personal space or vice versa. Okay, so think of MDM as a, is a tool to help you reach some of those compliance goals in great part. Now let's start to think about some of the apps. And Marco touched on this as well. What are the, how are we deploying apps? How are we supporting the deployment of those particular apps? Are your apps being deployed through either that Google or the, the Apple marketplace? And if so, most all EMMs really have adopted the management framework that's going to allow us to silently deploy those apps from that marketplace using one standardized enterprise account meaning your enterprise can basically connect with Google services or Apple services. You are now deploying apps against, say, one dedicated account. You are billing licensing to one dedicated, no, excuse me, one dedicated account, uh, no longer allowing users, say, to go download their own apps and pay for their own licenses or forcing them to do so. So we've got a lot of flexibility there, but there's another side of this coin. If your app is not deployed through the Play Store, there could be some other challenges here. Maybe you've got a private app that's developed in-house that you want to distribute to your devices. Well, MDM can help with that as well. We just need to find the right fit. There are some MDMs out there that offer the flexibility to effectively allow you to sideload applications on those devices. 
So that is actually using some more proprietary features developed by that MDM, by that MDM developer rather, uh, uh, to deliver the applications that you need to those devices. Now next, let's configure some of the, the hosting options that might be available to you. Cloud hosting is pretty common practice today. Doesn't always fit in with everyone's service management policies though. So in that case, we do have solutions out there. There's multiple solutions out there that still offer on-prem solutions. Um, if we're not worried about on-prem, if we do embrace cloud, but maybe we've got some stringent security requirements, we could start to consider some of the directory service options. Meaning if we have a cloud environment out there and we want to uh, force users that are accessing the console to go through our own uh, active directory to be able to associate with that console, we can make that happen. We can typically connect an EMM tool with those types of directory services. Now, again, we can take that a step further. Maybe you've got users bringing their own device into their environment, and you want to enable users to only enroll if they are part of your directory service. That's entirely possible. We can allow users to enroll based on their, uh, their permission, based on their association with a specific uh, group within that directory service. We can also extend single sign-on capabilities to that user um, as they attempt to access devices, excuse me, as they attempt to access apps on those particular devices. So next again, let's start to think about device usage and performance, right? To some extent, an MDM can really be used to keep an eye on your managed assets. Uh, and some MDMs take it even, even a step further. We can start to collect some health data, some usage data about those devices and turn it into a, an insightful report. And again, even further, some MDMs out there will allow us to integrate with an ITSM or an asset management tool. Okay, so we can go full circle on this asset management piece. And lastly here, consider your support needs. Do you have a help desk? Do you want the help desk to try to leverage this, this MDM tool to support the hardware that's in the field? Again, as Marco alluded to previously, there are some tools out there that enable, say, uh, remote control of those devices, being able to get into the device and guide a user through a specific process within the UI. Um, again, as, as uh, an SE who's done a lot of troubleshooting, in a lot of cases, I need to see an issue happen. Um, remote control obviously enables exactly that. So a lot, of, a lot of functionality here to consider. Next slide, please. Great, so in this evaluation process, we, we do also have to consider you know, both some internal and external factors as we start to, to weed through some of the solutions. So internally start to consider what are those existing relationships? What are the existing contracts that you have in place? In, in many cases, you might already be paying for a, a management functionality that you're not currently using. So it's important to go back and look at that information. Okay. Maybe it's a functionality you could be using. Maybe it's something you no longer want to be paying for. Now, externally, we got to look at the MDM marketplace. There is a, a lot of merger and acquisition activity out there. Um, and that affects things. That affects roadmaps. There's implications of that type of merger. It's an incredibly competitive market, but we're seeing both OEMs and developers undergo these types of mergers. And this type of activity could ultimately affect your hardware support roadmap and any associated costs as well. So absolutely something to be aware of is what's going on in that MDM marketplace. Okay, and then lastly, again, this ties in with this, this first point of uh, maybe you've got an existing contract that's entitling you access to some management feature. We might perceive that as being free. Um, it's free as in you're already paying for it from some other software package. Uh, but free doesn't always translate to functional. So there's a lot of MDM solutions out there on the market that might come at little to no cost. Um, but that free solution might not accommodate your use case. So oftentimes, some of the more robust EMM tools on the market are those that have existing relationships with OEMs. Um, with those robust, with that excuse me, with those existing relationships, we're seeing more robust management capabilities come out for maybe that specific hardware, um, maybe some more robust uh, capabilities for application deployment or even firmware management. Okay. And again, just wanna stress that uh, an example, this is entirely an example of uh, uh, the ability to manage firmware, the ability to manage app deployment, for example, that's an entirely functional uh, feature that costs money. <laughs> 
Okay, so again, functional does not necessarily, excuse me, free does not necessarily mean functional, okay? Next slide, please. All right, so as we mentioned, we wanna to try to understand the requirements really for all use cases. And this really truly does collaboration, excuse me, does require collaboration with all stakeholders. So as we're going through this evaluation process, again, consider what platforms are you supporting? Are you supporting a scenario where users can bring their own device into your environment? Or are you issuing corporate owned devices, uh, issuing hardware to employees specifically? Of that hardware, are you issuing hardware for a dedicated use case? So Marco brought up those acronyms, BYOD. We've got uh, COPE, corporate owned, personally enabled, allowing users to have a personal space on their corporate issued device. COSU, corporate owned, single use. Okay, maybe setting up a device for a dedicated use case. This is very common. Both Apple and Google um, have, have really accommodated this type of use case very well. So we've got lots of tools here. Now, as you're going through this evaluation process, again, consider that uh, most MDMs will offer a free trial. And we really highly recommend taking, taking advantage of that. Um, you really wanna test these solutions against your hardware. You wanna test these solutions against your applications. I really stress that. Think about your application, about how you're deploying it. Again, if it's a private app, you might find some challenges trying to deploy that private app to those devices. And in those cases, we need to look at an MDM that might better accommodate that. We wanna make sure that you can enforce the security policies that might help you achieve your compliance goals. Okay. And lastly, we wanna make sure that the deployment methods fall in line with your operational and security protocols. So for example, that's great, we've got an MDM, but is your enrollment process actually user-friendly for BYOD users? Or do they need a, a, a four-year degree in computer science to understand the enrollment process, it's, right? We, we wanna make it functional, we wanna make it usable, we also wanna make it secure. So these are all important considerations. And I think if you take these factors into account, if you engage those stakeholders early in the evaluation process, the sign-off is gonna be seamless. Um, now, lastly, as, as you start to look at some of these demo options here, take into account the financial models, take into account the licensing models that are out there. So we see some solutions are offering licensing based on the number of enrolled devices. We see other solutions offering licensing based on the number of concurrent connections or even data usage. We also see users, excuse me, MDMs out there offering licensing based on uh, users accessing the actual system. So those licensing models can vary a little bit, but just as uh, an MDM must be capable of scaling to your deployment, the financial model needs to scale to justify the purchase. Next slide, please. Great. So let's, let's just take a look at some of the common challenges we encounter here. Um, so we've got some common challenges listed on the left and just some solutions we can offer up here on the right. But first off, the common challenge of it takes too long to ramp up the MDM, takes too long to get the subject matter experts involved to really be proficient at some of these processes. Well, we can help with that. So we can collaborate with your enterprise to really dial in the environment. We can help establish the framework you need to get the management solution up and running. So next we've got overwhelming updates. Think of this, if you have an existing EMM, an existing MDM utility out there, these tools need updates. Long gone are the days of set it and forget it. If we want to accommodate the most recent hardware, the most recent uh, uh, firmware builds from Apple, from Google, we need to take into account the updates available from the MDM providers as well. And this process can be overwhelming. Um, there's a lot that goes into an MDM update. There's a lot that can go into, for example, a migration. But we commonly work with users to go through that process. We commonly work with users to help plan that process. And I will say, while it's complicated, if it's appropriately planned, we can be successful. Next, we've got a lack of specialization. And, and this is kind of an interesting one. So um, <laughs> think, of, uh, think of the multiple platforms out there. And we actually just encountered this with the user. But uh, think of the multiple platforms that are out there and, and what you're comfortable managing um, and what you may need to manage in that future, right? So uh, maybe you've got a platform um, uh, excuse me, maybe, maybe you've got a, a specific platform like iOS that you're supporting, but you're not currently supporting Android. Okay. Or maybe you have, 
Uh, maybe you have, a, a, excuse me, uh, functions built into your MDM that are just simply not required for your particular deployment. So in, in either case, we can really help. We can bring platform knowledge to the table to try to make you proficient in that management scenario that you might otherwise ignore. Um, or in scenarios where you have too much functionality, maybe you only need to manage iOS devices, for example, we can explore some other MDM options that might better focus on that use case. And what we commonly see here, the last challenge is maxed out internal resources. Well, this is a very common challenge. Um, we can help with that. Um, bottom line is let us actively manage it for you. So um, this kind of goes back to the previous scenario. If you have a scenario where you might be reluctant to adopt the management of another platform just because you're not proficient in that. Well, we offer our managed mobility services to handle the management of, of really any particular use case that we see fit here. Okay, so we can really handle everything. We can handle the hardware onboarding. We can work with you on quarterly firmware management, bi-weekly application updates, day-to-day -day management of the rugged fleet. This is a very common task for us. So a lot of common challenges out there, but I, I just want to stress helps right around the corner. We can help with all these aspects. So we hear from a lot of customers looking for help. And excuse me, Edwin, next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, we, we hear from a lot of customers commonly looking for help, uh, obviously understanding their usage requirements uh, or trying to narrow the MDM options to their to their requirements, to their scope. Uh, and, and we can certainly help with those processes, obviously, but we can help with much more. As you can see on the slide, we, we do more than just MDM, but I will say MDM is a really, a, I say, a, a critical component of, of any successful deployment. Uh, again, we can offer services surrounding really all aspects of that mobile computing deployment. And bottom line is we wanna be your partner in this process, whether we're looking at a net new deployment or even just stepping in to help with one aspect of your deployment. We're here to help, and this is our specialty. So I, I thank you for, for looking at all this. Thank you for listening to all this, hearing me out here. Um, again, we, we can help with any of these services, and um, I encourage you, if any questions, concerns, please feel free to reach out to me. Please feel, to re feel free to reach out to Marco. We are here to help with these processes. Uh, next slide. Well, thanks very much, Tim and Marco. That uh, was a fantastic, uh, insightful presentation, I might say. So now it's time for us to answer your questions. So please enter those in the Q&A box and, and we have uh, still 10 minutes to address those. So first one that came in is which MDM can support site loading? Yeah, great question, great question. So I wanna take a step back and I wanna say that um, the, the framework that Google has put into place, for example, for management of Android devices accommodates app deployment through their Play Store, through their, through their marketplace specifically. Um, they do have an option in there for a, a private Play Store, the ability to deploy a private app. However, the developer still needs to play by all the rules of, of Google to get that app basically pushed through that private Play Store. So there are some select MDMs out there that, um, uh, have, again, worked with various OEMs, we'll say, that have the ability to effectively push, for example, an APK, push an Android installation file to devices and silently install them. Uh, just, just to name a few off the top of my head here, uh, I believe at Workspace One has that capability. We have the ability to push that APK and install it silently. Uh, Sodi Mobi Control does have that capability. We leverage that all the time. Uh, there's a product out there called uh, 42 Gears. You may have heard of it as Sure MDM in the past. Um, we, we've seen that functionality with them as well. So um, it's, it's not, a, not a feature that's, uh, we'll say, widely available these days, but there are select MDMs that have uh, built their solution up, worked very closely with many OEMs, and uh, uh, basically enabled this type of, we'll say, sideloading or the ability to push a, a private app without using that, that Google Marketplace to those devices. Great. So before I move on to the next question, uh, I do like to let you know that if you would like to explore how to select and optimize your mobile device management solution, please reach out to uh, Tim. His contact information is on the screen, or you can reach out to any of the barcodes group entities that are listed at the bottom. 
Let's go to the next question. How do devices get onboarded into the MDM platform? We're talking legacy, iOS, et cetera. Yeah, I can take that one, Edwin. Um, so there's definitely different mechanisms for that. There is uh, multiple tools. Uh, many are using a barcode. So if, if, the, if it's a rugged device, you can scan, scan something in or with the camera. Um, there's also some newer tools from like uh, Google, Google Zero Touch, uh, the Apple ABM Business Manager, the, the device enrollment program, and also even Samsung has uh, Samsung Knox enrollments. Uh, all these different tool sets are actually free uh, and they can also be integrated to your MDM solution to really do mass, mass enrollments and onboarding of devices. Great. Another one is, does an MDM allow me to meet my organization's compliance goals, like HIPAA, PCI, SOX? That's, that's a great question. And I, and I guess it all depends on specifically what the, what the compliance goal is. Um, but uh, really, depending on the requirement levels, uh, many device security settings can be enforced uh, to, to really make the device kind of comply with that, that type of uh, security compliance, that type of security policy, we'll say. Um, I had mentioned uh, in, in my portion of the presentation here a simple example of this, uh, something both Google and, and uh, Apple have done in their management framework is extend the ability to enforce uh, device level encryption or, or force users to basically set a pin code on the device, uh, thus encrypting the hardware, encrypting the data on that particular hardware as well. And that's a step towards, uh, for example, that's a step towards uh, achieving, for, uh, say, even HIPAA compliance. There's, there's much more to it, obviously, but um, it's a step in that particular process. So certainly uh, the MDM can be used as a, a tool to uh, help you achieve that. Right. So can an MDM prevent my devices from having their data be spied upon? You guys want me to take that one or you want to take that one? Sure, too? you can go for it, Marco. Um, yeah, from, from a corporate perspective, you know, the, the MDM solutions can set the native operating system for different securities uh, settings, just like Tim talked about in his, his, his slides that he went through. So you can really restrict some of the data, data leakage with data uh, protection levels. Um, from the end user's perspective, um, you know, some of these, some of these uh, features like uh, GPS tracking and other things, you can actually select a subgroup of that. So you can have different users having different kind of policies. So maybe for your uh, corporate owned devices, you have a totally locked down for the BYD devices. Maybe you're not tracking GPS, you know, so you're not spying on your end users. Uh, but you really want, you, you can set different policies for different, uh, different aspects of that. Nice. So how does Zebra stage now compare with its capabilities to more robust MDMs like SODI for continuous management and support? Oh, uh, that's a fantastic question. And I, I do want to say there, uh, stage now is, is not a dedicated mobile device management solution, but I will say in any successful deployment that I've done with rugged hardware, Zebra, Honeywell, whoever it may be, we do in great part rely on the OEM specific tools Maybe not for, say, onboarding or maybe for onboarding specifically, but in a lot of cases, we're actually using those tools to build up the config, uh, proprietary config specific to that device. So I would actually say stage now is a critical component of an MDM deployment itself is, and excuse me, stage now itself is not an MDM, but it's a, a, a nice complement, we'll say, to really any MDM that might be out there. Um, if, if you've worked with me on a Zebra deployment, for example, uh, with, with MDM, um, you've, you've very likely seen me leverage StageNow and StageNow functionalities to uh, really enrich the entire deployment experience. Um, and I will say too, a, a lot of OEMs out there um, have developed applications uh, that, that have been referred to as OEM config applications. Um, and what that does is it takes the functionality of a tool like StageNow, for example, and it puts it into app form. And it enables you as the administrator to say, push that OEM config app from your MDM, but also embed configuration. So for example, if within stage now you wanted to set some display settings, set your radio settings, some band settings, uh, channel settings, so on and so forth, we can actually deploy that Zebra OEM configure application uh, from uh, from your MDM. And as we do this by design by Google, we can also then check the boxes within the application to enable those particular features. So Zebra um, uh, StageNow is a fantastic tool. 
Uh, Honeywell's got a similar tool with their enterprise provisioner tool. In both cases, again, and we're, we're seeing this with other manufacturers, they've also come out with their uh, uh, OEM configuration tool to complement that, that type of deployment. But, but I wouldn't say it replaces an MDM solution. No, no, by no means, by no means. Very helpful, thanks. So realizing that every situation is different, but how much time is required to set up a deploy an MDM for most organizations? Yeah, I mean, Tim, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but that kind of depends. You know, I think yeah. we've seen with, with cloud uh, implementations, you know, it could take under, you know, it could take a couple hours underneath the day. If it gets more complicated with, you know, LDAP and other integrations, you know, it takes more time. Uh, on premise, that could be a whole other whole other aspect on premise. Yeah, that, that, that's a great point. Um, it, it's hard to wrap a number around it, but it absolutely varies by use case. And um, I will say, uh, uh, not in the early days of MDM, but um, it, it, uh, qu quite a while ago, as as we would pitch MDM solutions, um, I, I would tell users to accommodate a, a good working day, a good eight hours for the entire setup. Um, and, and that's that's including some knowledge transfer, collaboration, and building the actual configuration, uh, going through some testing. But again, now you have to multiply that across multiple use cases. So that particular use case was a, a rugged handheld setup for a select application. Um, you know, now apply that to BYOD, apply that to uh, other types of management scenarios. Um, but it, unfortunately, the answer is it depends. It varies based on use case, absolutely. It may be a good reason for a consultation. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yep. yeah and that's something Tim could definitely address if, if that's an interest to you. Uh, can an MDM be a managed, managed service? Absolutely. Uh, we, we can wrap it in, we could wrap it together in a, um, as a service program with the hardware, the services and the software. Um, and we could also do uh, scenarios where you have uh, support. So you can call somebody and get support, uh, SLAs, um, all these different aspects can be included. Yes. So I think I know the answer to this, but maybe you can uh, kind of get into a little depth here. Can I manage printers with an MDM? You're on mute. Uh, I'm muted. I, maybe I was just doing my best mime here. Um, yes, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> printers can be managed with an MDM solution. There's some other factors that are going to come into play. Um, in, in some cases, it might depend on the, say, the, the, the age of that printer or the, uh, we'll say, the, the, the OS, the guts of that printer. Um, but yes, absolutely, printers can be managed by an MDM. I will say, in a lot of cases, it does require, a, we'll say, a proxy or a connector piece. Uh, uh, typically, a, a, a proxy will say that resides on site. Printers communicate with that uh, connector, that proxy, and the proxy then communicates out to the MDM service. But absolutely, it's possible. Um, and I will say, too, there, there are a lot of uh, standalone printer solutions out there that are really dedicated, um, dedicated printer management solutions that we see being embraced by a lot of, uh, a lot of users out there. Great. Well, with that, we have reached the top of the hour, and I'd like to thank Marco and Tim for their insightful uh, presentation, and please reach out to us if, if uh, you'd like to explore this further with, uh, with them and, and request a free consultation. Uh, I appreciate all of you attending today's session and look forward to seeing you on the next webinar. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.